Hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, it is Wednesday, May 17th, 2017. This is the Aperio Teaching and Learning Call. Um, and today we have our guest, Nadine Blanchett. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. From Yeah, that's perfect. Oh, okay. Uh, and who's going to um, introduce us to the Tension Course Outliner uh, tool. Um, we'll go through our usual uh, agenda, which is uh, the welcome, which is now, and uh, project updates. And um, then we will, uh, once Nadine gets her screen sharing working, uh, Nadine, which browser are, are you using by chance? I'm on Chrome. Okay, exactly. that should work. Yeah, that's what I usually use for screen sharing. It's been working pretty well for me on a regular basis. So, okay, um, well, I could. it's a little. It can be a little tricky because it asks you a lot of questions. You first are downloading uh, what's called a JNLP file. Then you um, go to your uh, desktop, open the JNLP file. It's a Java program, a Java applet, and the Java program run, starts running and then it might ask you to upgrade your Java if it does just skip that tell it later don't upgrade your Java because that'll take a lot of extra time um, and then it'll ask you if it's okay to run and then you click continue and then run so it's like a four or five steps to get okay. uh, screen sharing working um, and if you have any any trouble please let me let us know and we'll try and help you out here uh, so uh, project updates and announcements. Uh, this May 19th, this Friday, is the um, the hotel. Oh, we got it. It's come up. Awesome. Uh, the registration for um, the hotel, uh, the special pricing for the hotel at Open Aperio is uh, going through this Friday. So I highly recommend you get your hotel reservations made. And hopefully you all are coming to the Open Aperio conference. I hope to see many of you there um other project other announcements and there's also uh yeah there's a great program if you go to the conferences uh um link there you can see more about the program we have malcolm brown as a speaker on next generation digital learning environments we'll probably have a panel at the closing a community panel uh the closing session um, there's going to be a number of birds of a feather on for Sakai uh, on things like uh, Samago, and also there'll be one on next generation digital learning environment. There'll be uh, some po for Sakai, uh, you know, post uh, conference meetings on Wednesday and Thursday morning. So there'll be a lot going on, and again, I hope to see you all there. Um, other announcements and updates. Sakai 11.4 is in the works. The testing is going well, but we really could use one or two more testers. It's mostly uh, uh, Napika from Marist College who's doing most of the testing. I'm doing some testing, so it would be really, really great to get a little more help. We're going to have a test fest tomorrow at uh, 10 a.m. Um, and uh, that's, uh, I think that's the main thing. There's uh, uh, um, Sakai virtual conference funds have been used, but I, I don't know. I don't think Wilma's was on the call. I would have liked her to maybe give that update, but um, you know they were used primarily towards uh, improving Sakai's uh, mobile capability, uh, and that that's really progressed very well. And also making calendar uh, calendar widget be consistent across tools. So we have a lot of good work going on there. A lot of good things going on in accessibility. There's an accessibility meeting today at 4 p.m. Eastern which I know is kind of late for a lot of people, but should be good for people on the West Coast um, of the US. And it's also good for having some Australian developers who are joining the call, which is part of the reason. Um, Terry writes, at what PM you broke up? Oh, accessibility at 4 PM. Sure. And I have been breaking. I, I've had intermittent issues with my, my uh, uh, with my sound on Big Blue Button. I don't know if that's my headset. I don't know if that's my uh, network bandwidth. I'm not sure if that's Big Blue Button. I don't know what the problem is there. So sometimes I'm clear and sometimes I'm not. So let me thank you for letting me know. Um, any other questions? Sakai 12, we're likely to branch and have more definition at, at the conference itself. Um, we've had a lot of discussion around that. and. Um, 
Uh, let me think what else is going on. So talked a little bit about accessibility, which is making really good progress. Uh, we're hoping to be WCAG certified with Sakai 12. Um, the New York uh, University skin has really taken off. A lot of universities are using that, uh, even backporting it to their Sakai 11 instances. Um, that's in Sakai 12 already. Um, and that's all I can think of for the moment. Uh, so I guess, uh, Nadine, are you almost ready to get started? Oh, and let me yeah, see if there's... Okay, great. Uh, let me just check before I before I jump the gun. Let me make sure anybody else do a kind of a round robin, see if anyone else has announcements, uh, and then we'll let you take it away. So, um, Adam, if, if uh, Jennifer, John, uh, Louisa, Mark, Bill, Sean, anyone have any announcements or questions they, they want to bring up? Not from me. Okay. Okay, doesn't seem like it. Nobody is, uh, Louisa says she doesn't have anything. So, okay, go ahead and let's uh, go ahead and please introduce yourself, um, Nadine, and take it away. Uh, do you see the screen uh, okay? Yeah, see the screen fine. Okay, good. So I'm uh, Nadine Blanchett. I'm an analyst at uh, HEC Montreal, and I'm here with uh, Philippe Rancourt, which, uh, who is our uh, team leader for the development in Sakai. And uh, today we want to talk to you about a new tool that we've built that's called the Tangent Course Outliner. And I apologize in advance for my English. I didn't have the chance to practice um, much lately, so <laughs> it's, it's a bit rusty. Um, okay, so what is our Course Outliner? I remember the very first Sakai conference that I attended. Uh, I was, there was a really interesting um, lecture by a teacher who compared Sakai to a uh, homeware um, hardware, a uh, home a store, um, hardware store, in the sense that you know there's plenty of stuff, you know that what you need is there, but you don't know where exactly to find it. What we wanted with our tool was uh, to provide something for the teacher to guide their students through everything that's going to happen during the class. Um, and we also wanted that tool to be kind of a guide for the teacher himself because uh, we wanted something that would be very quick and easy and simple and with as little uh, learning curve as possible. Uh, another goal was for the school who wanted to have a certain standard for the um, really important and mandatory information for the students. They wanted the students to know where to get the information um, from classes to classes. I mean, even if the course was different and the way to present it was different, some basic information would always be at the same place. So I have uh, prepared a little. Um, I'm going to start by showing you um, the view of the teacher as um, as he's building uh, his course outline. And then I'll, I'm going to talk about uh, the configuration. So I'm going to be a little bit backward here. Um, do you see the new screen with Sakai? Yes, I, I see it fine. Okay. I was just keeping Good. myself on mute. <laughs> so what we see right here is the course outline that's been started by a, by a teacher. So you see the, the view of the teacher. Uh, on the left side, you have different uh, pages uh, that can be added. And for each pages, we have what we call uh, rubrics, and they're different. I'm sorry, they're different from each uh, different uh, pages. So what you see in presentation would be different than in uh, the contact information. And you have the evaluation that's specific. You can have different type of uh, evaluation, and then you have the course organization where the teacher uh, can had uh, can organize as he wants. Uh, most of our teachers go by uh, lectures, like they have one page for each classes, but uh, you could choose to have different uh, rubrics and different information as you want. For each of those pages, you can choose what you want to add. For example, I can have a text, document, images, videos, and all that. And if I add, for example, a video, we uh, support uh, YouTube, Vimeo, 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 and Dailymotion, but we also support our own uh, um, system at the school. 
and you can have the uh, the link. And for each uh, of these uh, pop-up screen, you have different information. You can choose to have this element visible for the students that are um, registered in that class, or you can have it public. And you can show this element right now, or you can choose to show it at a later date. And this is for all the elements that you have. We wanted to make everything as clear as possible for the teacher. So when you have an element, you have little flags that provide information. For example, in that case, it's not published yet, so the teachers see that the students cannot see that element because it's not published. In the same way, if I choose to have it uh, at a later date, I would have a little flag that tells me this element is hidden before that date. So everything is clear and you see right away if it's possible, if, uh, what is the state of every element. We have a link to all the other tools of uh, Sakai. So it's called, uh, well, maybe we could, could find a better name than Sakai Entity. But for example, if I have assignments or some I go, if I have forums, they would appear here and I could choose to add them to my, uh, to my course outline. Um, here at, uh, in Montreal, we have uh, classes that are coordinated. That means we have several sections, uh, several group of students that follow the same classes but might be um, teach, taught by different teachers. So um, the tool is uh, section aware. But the way it works is um, for each site, you can have one common outline that would be available for all your section in that uh, site. But you could decide to have uh, one specific to um, to that section. But the way it works usually is that the specific uh, outline inherit all the content from the comment, the common. Um, so if I go inside, you can see that the content that was there before is there also, but I have the little sign that tells me it's read-only because in our case, what we decided is that content would be mandatory. Uh, if it's in the comment, every student should see it, even if they're in different sections. Um, this is uh, regulated by different uh, permissions, so you can decide that, uh, for example, only the coordinator could change the comment, but uh, every uh, teacher could change whatever is in their uh, specific uh, outline. Um, for the students, of course, it's uh, totally. I'm sorry. I'm just gonna get grab a student here. For the students, it's uh, totally transparent. They only see their section, and the uh, the look is very similar. Uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me just a minute. I forgot to publish the um, the one for the section of that student. That's why it doesn't see it yet. Uh -huh. so. well, that shows that feature works well then. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't plan on showing it to you yet, though. That's OK. Uh, so you see, I put it back in the common. So while the teacher is working on that section, you can show the comment to the students. So I'm going to go back as a student. So what was uh, really appreciated by our students is that now with uh, SACA 11 and it's um, responsive, so we made our tool responsive as well. So in a regular desktop, you would see the same view. But if you uh, go to um, a smaller device, you have the presentation that's a little bit different. 
you have the menu here where you can go on a specific place, but you can also go from one page to the other with the arrow here. And you can see that what was not published earlier is not seen by the student. At the end, you don't see uh, the little uh, work that was there because it was planned for a later date. So if we think about uh, the configuration, when the teachers see uh, the course outline for the first time, it already has some pages that were added. But that's something that we decided as, at the school. So every page here is a part of a template that we built. And in the template, you decide what page you have, what are the different uh, sub-pages are in the temp that page. You decide if it's mandatory or not. For example, here, the description is mandatory, but the other ones are optional, so you can add them or not. So everything, uh, all those things can be decided in the template. Also, um, the elements that you had on every section could be different, the list of elements according to what you do. Um, there can be several templates. In uh, our case, for example, we were thinking um, the uh, mode of teaching can be very different and the needs can be very different. So for a course that would be online, the template would be different than for a course that was uh, in class. Um, for now, uh, these templates are built in the um, database by a SQL script, but the next step would be to have um, to, to have a, an interface so an administrator could build uh, one of several templates. Um, there's also a possibility to have a template by department, for example, things like that. Um, the last thing we were we want to do is that uh, there's uh, providers that allow to fill in some of the section. For example, in our case, the description will come from the catalog, so the description in the course outline would be the exact same that the students see when they, um, they shop for their classes. Um, and that's about it for now. I don't think I forgot anything. Do you have any questions? Yeah, let's open it up for, for questions. I know I've got a few, but let me see if anyone else has some. Either uh, feel free to speak up or put them in the chat, and we'll read them off the chat so they get on the recording. So uh, one, okay. So Terry writes, can you go over common again? Um. The common is the basic um, course outline. So if you have only one section, if you have a class with only one section, or if you want all your students to see the same content, you use the common. In uh, some of our classes, we have different, uh, we have teachers that teach very differently. So in their case, they would put nothing in the common and put all the information in the in their own specifics. I'm not sure if that answered the question. Good, it sounds like and, you answered the question. Go yeah, ahead. And the menu, like I said, this is what we decided at the school, but this is all in the template and can be anything you want. You can be as as much or as little as you want. For example, in the course organization, you can add several lectures as much as you want, or you could, as opposed to the presentation, where obviously there's only one. But that's all set up in the in the template. Other questions? Uh, so Louisa asks how how it is. Well, some questions are coming in. Uh, I'll take one at a time here. How is it different from the syllabus tool in Sakai? Um, it's got uh, it's got a bit more uh, functionality in the sense that you the you can build a template in advance, and each teacher are going to see uh, see it. Uh, you have links to um, different um uh, you have links to all the tools and i'm sorry i didn't work a lot with syllabus i know that there was not all the uh, um all the um functionality that you wanted when we looked at it 
uh, I think it's more of the templates that's different and the way that uh, we can link to other uh, tools in, uh, in Sakai too. Okay, so and the next question, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, that's fine. Um, okay. So it sounds like you don't have much experience with, with syllabus because you initially took a look at it and it didn't seem like it did what you needed it to do. And that was part of the impetus of, of building this tool, it sounds like. Um, yeah. But we already have something to, uh, I think, before we had uh, syllabus, but I had to be to talk with Philip to be sure. So another quite some other questions coming in. Uh, Terry asks, "Is this um, a native Sakai core tool, the Sakai tool uh, that you, you know, uh, bring into Sakai, or is it an LTI tool that you plug in through uh, that that channel?" It's in Sakai. It's not an LTI LTI tool. And uh, she asks also, "Do you have plans to integrate it into Sakai core? Do you have plans to contribute it back to the community?" Uh, it's already available to the community. I think uh, it's uh, that would be more a question with with Philip. But yes, it's something that someone could use. So it's out there as a probably as a contrib tool right now. Oh, on GitHub. Contrib. Okay. Uh, GitHub. Yeah. On the GitHub space, yeah, as a contrib. Uh, so if it negate the need the use for lesson tools, I would say yes and no. Uh, some of our teacher wanted something really simple where they just uh, build the information, but we have teacher that would put the uh, basic information like the the presentation and all that, and still use lessons to build uh, to build pages. So some for some teacher it's enough, and they don't use lessons. For them, some teacher they want to use both. Uh, what else? Uh, the list of uh, tools, the link to the tools is um, is uh, generated by what's enable, what's available in a specific site. It's not pre-populated. As you've seen in my demonstration, I had only one uh, assignment. I didn't use forum, so forum wasn't there. If I had add forum to my site, it would it would appear. Uh, does any follow-up work have to be done if Spangen is used in a course from one term to another? Um, yeah, that's an. Uh, right now we have a functionality that allows us to copy from the old system we had to the new one, and uh, for the next session we'll have a copy function from one uh, session to the other. Does authoring of uh, tangent content? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't understand uh, authoring. <laughs> Uh, does that mean uh, the permissions or authoring is the uh, you know actually creating the building the the uh, um, the screen? Oh, it, um, it's all in Sakai. And it sounds like it's also in that SQL statement in terms of creating a template. So how do you how do you create yeah. the template? Do you create the template in Sakai and then figure out the SQL for it, or how does that work? Um. It's the. I'm, uh, I know Philip should answer that one. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, it's a database that we populate, so the database is a link in Sakai, but we just populate it with SQL. I don't know if Philip can answer that one better. So I'm noticing. And I'm sorry. I'm I'm kind of digressing a little bit, but I'm noticing. I don't think so. It may be in GitHub, but um, is it under the contrib area in Sakai? Because Sakai actually has a contrib area in GitHub. Uh, and then I see Philip responded, so I'll read. We can read that out loud. Um, he wrote, uh, "You build the SQL." Me. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. You build a SQL script and populate the tension table. So, um, so I guess I have a question from Philip, and I see there's other questions there. Um, Philip, is it in the contrib area of Sakai? Of of GitHub, I mean. It's not under contrib yet. Okay, great. Good to know. It might be good if you want more community visibility to get a, to get a space for that under contrib. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So I can see how Tingen uh, provides a one-stop short, sort of like a syllabus could, by providing directed instruction, this first and this. Yeah, that's it. Uh, so from... Um, Uh, so from implementation to now, how much uptake has been has there been, primarily from faculty, as they seem to be primary user of Tingent content? Uh, how much uptake? Uh, almost all of uh, almost all of our all of our faculty uh, use the. The tool. Um, we we are uh, we have the old an old version of the tool that almost all the faculty use right now, and we have the new ones that's been on pilot for a month, right? A month. And so I think there's some questions about like what the specific needs does. Uh, Tingent, Phil, what were the use cases mainly that you were thinking about in, in building it? Um, we have two goals. One goal was to have something that would be more standard from this, so the students would know from one uh, course to the other, they would know where to go to um, to do their uh, their work. They would know like, okay, for this, uh, this is the class I'm going on to. This is where I go to know what should I read first, uh, when should I read it, when is my next uh, work and all that. And the other goal was to make it as easy as possible for the teachers. So um, it's not that one teacher would not use it and uh, just use um, – and uh, yeah, I'm sorry. So – it would the two goals were to make it easy for this to for the teacher to have a to provide a guideline to the to the students and for the students to have a certain feeling of um familiarity from one side to the other they know where to go mm -hmm. to know how to uh construct their studies right so consistency for the students makes it easier for the students and it make, makes it easier for the faculty to create the you know to set it up um, and it makes yeah. it easier for the students to know where to go initially in courses to, to look for the basic information they need exactly uh, yes there are sub pages in Tengen, uh and you you don't have to uh, if you go again it's in the template so for example in course organization you can decide to have a cluster um, might not be the best word it's like a group and in, in the group you can decide to have different uh, lectures and you can have and you can add them as much and you can put as much cluster as you want. You can rename them as you want. So most of our uh, teacher would use just a lecture and have one for each um, sense uh, for each um, lecture, but some would would go by team and would just create a different page for each team. I noticed in one of your um uh, ads, there was something like learning strategy. There was an area where you're typing in, I guess, different types of content. Mm -hmm. um, could you explain a little bit what those those options were and what they what they mean or how they're differentiated? Uh, you mean in the course organization? Yeah, I think so. I saw somewhere where it was like learning learning strategy was you know was one of the sections, for example. Yeah, you. The way uh, the way we work is uh, you have different um, sections. So uh -huh. you can describe what this session is all about. You have the objective. And a lot of our teachers like to have like activities before session. For example, if you want your students to read some certain things before they come in class. And then you have activities during session. So most of the time the teacher would put their um, the, their slideshow and they would make it sure that they wouldn't see the slideshow before the actual class. And you can have different activities after a section. So that's an easy way to organize the content you want the students to see. But again, this is how we decide to implement it in our templates. It could be different according to uh, 
for example, for an online class where there's no actual physical presence, uh, the uh, the different uh, group could be different. Mm, okay, thanks. Looks like there's some other comments. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the slab is still in the lesson tool as add a baby, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was a question about statistics. Um, does the tension stats appear in the statistics area? Uh, not yet, but that's one thing we want to do. That's uh, for our next phase phases. Yeah, and um, I don't know if I mentioned the evaluation is a little bit different because there's some um, you have different type of evaluation, and the system asks you right away what kind of evaluation it is, and how, so it's a bit different than the other uh, um, than the other pop-up screen to add information. So that's something you can do also. Yeah, there's a question about does it incorporate the links to like assessments, to like assignments, like in lessons, and I think you showed that earlier, right? Yeah, we do. Uh, right now, we have it in the course organization. So that, but so it's called a Sakai entity because right now the only thing I have in that side is the, the assignments. But if I had the test and quiz or forms, they would, they would appear here also, as well. So, any other questions? Anything we missed in the chat? There was a question about the the students. Yeah, so far the students have been very good for the the tool. They're really happy that they can have it on their um, they can have it on their uh, mobile now. Yeah, I really love that you made a responsive design with that. Mm -hmm. It's excellent. And it does have what a modern look too. Uh, the, what about the orphans like blogs and wiki? Uh, you mean to add uh, links to uh, attention? Uh, I guess we could do it, but we don't use them. Oh, good. <laughs> so, so um, who would, uh, if, if an institution wanted to use Tengen now and maybe get a little primer on how to, you know, set up their SQL statements, set up the, the tool, who would that would they contact uh, you and Philip or? Yep, that's it. Um, we are uh, both in the in the uh, distribution list, I think. I can or I can leave the. What is the cost? Well, it's an open source, so there's no cost. Maybe we should charge something. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I assume are you, are you um, under the same license as Sakai, the uh, educational community license version two, or are you Apache license? What? How are you licensing your uh, the software? Oh, that's a good question. Phil, can you answer that? And not figure out the licenses uh, for, yet. Okay. Yeah, for 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 now we're the only one who just built it and we're doing the, the pilot at our school right now. Cool. 
Yeah, I recommend, uh, yeah, definitely considering uh, when you figure out the license, consider, um, you know, the educational community license version two, which is Sakai's license or the Apache version two, which is almost exactly the same as Sakai. Um, if it was to go into Sakai, you know, if it ever became, uh, went from Contrib to uh, becoming part of core Sakai, I would assume uh, it would be easier if it was the same license. I assume I'm not 100% sure of that, but. Uh... Uh, it's out of available uh, for uh, 11. We're using it on 11 right now. And um, I don't know if you saw, uh, Phil mentioned something important. The, a big concept that's different from a lesson in a syllabus, I think, is the inheritance, the concept that you can have content in a common and then have specifics for the different sections. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that is different. That is, I can see where that'd be really powerful. What technology, and this will be for Philip, I'm curious what technologies it was built in. Angular JS. Okay, thanks. Hibernate Spring. Well, that's great because that's that's what Sakai is based on is Hibernate Spring. Yeah, we tried to uh, to be as uh, Sakai friendly as possible. <laughs> Any other questions? Seems like maybe that we've run out of steam on the questions there. Um, uh, thank you very much for uh, the presentation um, and good luck with your pilot and appreciate you sharing that and, and making it something available to the community uh, as well. Um, uh, just uh, one. Uh, one last um, Curtis who's working with us is going to be at the uh, conference and he's going to be there to show if someone want to try it. Awesome. Who is that? I'm sorry. Uh, Curtis. Uh, it's one of uh, our developers that works on the project and he's going to be at the Aperero, Aperero conference. Cool. Is he going to be presenting on it or just available? Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's, um, how do you call that? It's uh, one of the... Um, the kiosk that's uh, out there when you the showcase oh in the showcase awesome excellent yeah. curtis van osh okay is that how you pronounce it curtis van osh or ach or osk um i always call him curtis <laughs> sorry <laughs> okay. fair enough yeah. All right, well, anything more, Nadine, that you, that you have for us, or do you feel like uh, we covered it pretty completely? I think it's about it for, uh, for the level uh, required for now. As, of course, if you have more questions, uh, we can, you can send it if you have more technical questions or what are plans for the, new, the functionality in the next phases. Because uh, you, you might have noticed that there's no print function, but that's coming too, and different kinds. So we have different plans like that. Cool. And your English was uh, excellent, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, very, very good. Um, okay, so um, uh, we will move on to uh, just the final thing to wrap up. We uh, There's not going to be any meeting on June 7th. Um, I don't know if anyone has suggestions or presentations they want post-June 7th. I don't know that we've... Uh, uh, scheduled anything. So we typically do what? The first and third weeks in the month? Is that right? I got confused because we were debating between first and third and second and fourth. Um, I think it's first and third. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. So uh, let me take a look. I don't think anything is um, scheduled upcoming, so I don't know if anyone has ideas or wants to volunteer um, to show the things they're working on at their institution for post Aperio. We're definitely not going to have a meeting on June 7th because of Open Aperio. Um, Terry wrote, Open Aperio highlights for those of us who couldn't attend. 
Well, we can certainly try that. We could do like a round robin. I don't know that we want to put uh, that on any one person because it'll be going so much, um, be so much going on. But certainly, we could do a follow up. open a perio debrief it could be kind of a round table from different people having different perspectives uh from their experience at, at open Aperio and presentations they saw that's a good idea we could probably arrange that any other any other suggestions And I also know that for, from a Sakai perspective that there was interest in uh, keeping the Jirapalooza alive. And so potentially we could you know, schedule another one of those in June, one or two of those, if people are interested. It's a yes from Terry. Okay, and we're just going to do a final round robin to see if anyone has uh, final comments, um, suggestions, questions before we sign off today. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, then we'll say thank you one more time to our presenters. Um, so Dave, Jennifer, John, Louisa, Mark, uh, Terry, do any of you have any additional uh, questions, comments? Um, Louisa has a question about the open rooms in the conference. Okay, what's your question? Dave is good. What's your question, Louisa? Um, the open rooms in the conference, uh, I believe they are all the days of the conference, Monday, Tuesday, uh, and Wednesday. And I think there's also project, well, there are project rooms available after the conference that Sakai is taking advantage of. And I think ePortal, um, there is a, uh, the, the 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 available slots will actually be posted, um, I believe, on like pads outside the room, um, so that you can just go up and see what what times are available to sign up. You're welcome. Okay. Well, I guess that sounds like it's it for today. Thank you, everyone, for attending. And again, thank you, Nadine, very much for presenting, and Philip for uh, the backup there on the technical Thanks side. Ryan. Yeah. And I'm going to stop the recording now, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Take Bye. care.